everyone. I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the diamond Christmas bauble, which is this one that you see right here. Uh, I have made this bauble with a worsted weight yarn. I am using Heartland by Lion Brand uh, in the colors of Hot Springs and uh, also Acadia. Now for the one here that you see in front, it has a little bit more of a golden tint to it. I use the color The Great Sand Dunes, also the Heartland uh, yarn by Lion Brand. So for this pattern, you're going to need two colors of yarn and you're going to need about 50 yards of each. You are also going to need a plastic uh, DIY bobble if you would like, or uh, perhaps an old one that you'd like to kind of upcycle. I will also include instructions uh, in the written pattern and briefly in this video on how to complete the bobble if you would like to use a little bit of fiber fill instead of crocheting around the bobble. You're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook and then a stitch marker, and of course a yarn needle and a pair of scissors for finishing off your work. The free written pattern can be found on my blog at ridgetexturescrochet.com and I'll provide the link in the notes for this video uh, there for you. For the pattern, it will be helpful for you to have a copy of this color chart. Um, the color work is uh, completed by using this chart. It's not written out step by steps, but I'm going to show you in the video how to read it. So head on over to my blog. You can either uh, save it and print it from there, or you can purchase and download the PDF copy, which will also include the chart there for you. And that is all you're going to need and uh, once again thank you so much for joining me and uh, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're here it is updated weekly so thank you so much I'm going to grab my hook and my yarn and we will get started crocheting this diamond bobble together if you are interested, this is bobble number five in a set of seven that I am working on. Uh, numbers one to four can currently be found on my blog and in my YouTube channel under the Christmas Patterns playlist. And uh, bobbles number six and seven will be coming out shortly. So today we are going to start first by making a magic ring. Now, if you would rather not make a magic ring, you may start by chaining four and then working in this, uh, joining with the slip stitch in the first chain to make your ring. Once you have your ring completed, you're going to start by round one by chaining one, and then work six single crochet stitches into the center of that ring. In this pattern, we are going to be working in continuous rounds, so we will not be joining or turning at the end of each round. We're always going to be working in the same direction. So you're going to want to take your stitch marker and have it on hand. We are going to be marking the first stitch in every round and then moving that stitch marker as our work progresses. So for round two, you're going to work two single crochets in the back loop only of the next stitch and each stitch all the way around. So to work in your back loop, you take a look at the top of your stitch and you'll see this V. To work in the back loop only, you're only going to un insert your hook under the horizontal bar, the loop that is the furthest away from you. That is how you work in the back loop only. So uh, we will be working in the back loop all the way around. So in the first stitch and in each stitch following, you're going to work two single crochets in the back loop only. Remember to mark your first stitch and at the end of this second round, you're going to have a total of 12 stitches. Now 
for round three, you are going to work in the back loop only two single crochets in that first stitch. followed by one single crochet in the next. Repeat that, two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one in the next. Repeat it all the way around. At the end of round three, you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. For round four, we're continuing our increase round. So you'll notice that your work is getting progressively larger. So for round four, we're going to work two single crochets in the first stitch in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one in each of the next two and at the end of round four you will have a total of 24 stitches. For round five working in the back loop only you're going to work two single crochets in the next stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around and then at the end of round five you will have a total of 30 stitches. In round six, working in the back loop only, you're going to work single, two single crochets in the next stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Repeat that all the way around, two in the next stitch, followed by one in each of the next four. And at the end of your round six, you are going to have a total of 36 stitches. In round seven, working in the back loop only, you're going to work two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next five. Repeat that all the way around, and at the end of round seven, you are going to have a total of 42 stitches. For round eight, you're going to work two single crochets in the next stitch in the back loop only, followed by one single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Repeat that all the way around and at the end of round eight, you're going to have a total of 48 stitches. And this marks the end of our increase rounds. You'll now want to, or when you're finished that round, you'll want to take out your chart and get ready to work some of that color work. So now for round rounds 9 through to 19, we are going to start following our chart. Now how we follow our chart is if we take a look at it here, each square equals one single crochet stitch. 
So there are a total of 48 columns because there are 48 stitches in a round. And then I have 10 rows here uh, because we're going to be doing our 10 rows of color work. Now for me on my chart, my white squares are going to equal my color A and my red squares are going to equal my color B. I'm always going to be working in the same direction. So for me, I'm right-handed. I'm always going to be reading right to left. And uh, at the end of each round, because I'm always working in the same direction, I'm going to come back to the right and start on round two, read across, come back round three and read across. So for instance, on my chart, I'm going to start down here and block one, one. And I'm going to start with my color A and I'm going to work three single crochet stitches in my color A. Then I'm going to work one in B, three in A, one in B, three in A, and so forth all the way across. I'm going to work with you uh, just a couple of rounds just to show you how I change color in the midst of my work so that uh, my work is seamless and kept fairly neat and tidy. So we're going to do that now. I have my color A, which is my purple here, uh, my hot springs color. And as I mentioned, I'm first going to work three single crochet stitches in that color A. So there's one. I'm going to replace my stitch marker. And then two. And now in my third, because I know I'm going to want to switch to color A for the fourth, or for color B for the fourth switch, uh, for the fourth stitch, sorry. I'm going to insert my hook, I'm going to yarn over and draw up a loop, but I'm not going to finish the stitch in my color A. Because the next stitch is a color B, I'm simply going to drop my color A, I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook, and then complete the stitch with the color B. So I'm now ready to work my next stitch in my color B. Again though, I'm going to want to switch back to my color A. So I'm going to only insert my hook, drop a loop, drop the color B, pick up the color A, which was conveniently just hanging down in behind, and I'm going to complete the stitch. Now when I'm working my pattern, it's up to you how you want to proceed if you want to carry your yarn in behind the entire time and work over top of it or uh, simply uh, carry it along. The trick is just not to pull the non-working yarn too tight because it will cause your fabric to buckle and you don't want that. I like to work over top of it just because it keeps it all nice and neat and tidy. So I'm then going to work three stitches again in color A. So working over top and I'm pulling them just not too tight, just straight across. There's one, there's two, and on my third stitch I want to switch back to my color B so I just let the color A drop, pick it up, and finish my stitch with my color B. I'm now working with my color B, I'm working over top of the yarn below, the non-working yarn, drop it, and then pick up my color. So there are a lot of color changes and as you get going you're going to find that you will fall into a bit of a groove. Uh, it will get easier. You might find it a little bit awkward at first switching, but you're just going to follow that chart and switch your colors as need be. Just like so. So go ahead and complete the chart. We're working three stitches in our color A, followed by one stitch in color B, all the way around your bobble. So 
So I've now come to the end of my round nine. I have worked three in color A followed by one in color B all the way around. I've ended off with my color B, but I have my color A back onto my hook. So I'm now going to look at my chart and I'm going to go back here to the right hand side to the beginning and I'm going to look at my next round. And my next round I have two in my color A, one in color B, one in color A, one in color B, followed by five in color A, and then it's going to start its repeat. So I'm going to start with my color A on my hook, work that first stitch in color A, the second stitch in color A, but I'm going to switch to my color B, then I have one in color B, in color A, and one more in color B. Five in my color A before I start the repeat in my pattern. So that's all there is to working the color graph. I'm going to let you go ahead and do that. Finish working through to round 19 and uh, then at that time meet me back here and we will go over the decrease rounds together. I've now come to the end of round 19 and uh, when you do so you'll have something that looks a little bit like this hopefully and uh, what you're going to do at this point is you're going to take your bobble if you're working around round one if you are not working around one I would wait a little bit longer before you stuff it um, just to uh, make it a little bit easier for you but if you're working around a bobble go ahead and insert it now this one is uh, has a 10 inch circumference on it okay so you're going to go ahead and insert that and then you're going to begin round 20 round 20 is the start of our decrease rounds so what you're going to do to start is a continue working in the back loop only. You're going to start by single crocheting two together. So insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Insert your hook in the next, yarn over and drop another loop. With three loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all three. That's your single crochet three together. And then you're going to work one single crochet in each of the next six stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around, single crochet two together, followed by one in each of the next six. And at the end of this round, round 20, you're going to have a total of 42 stitches. For round 21, continue working in the back loop only. You're going to single crochet two together and work one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round, you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round 22, you're going to single crochet two together over the next two stitches. And then you're going to work one single crochet in each of the next four. Repeat that all the way around. And at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 30 stitches.
For round 23, you're going to single crochet two together in the next two stitches, continuing to work in the back loop only, and you're going to work a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Repeat that all the way around. And at the end of round 23, you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. For round 24, this is if you're working around the bobble, round 24 is your final round. You're going to single crochet uh, two together in the next two stitches. followed by a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round you will have a total of 18 stitches. So now at the end of round 24, if you're working around the bobble, this is uh, your final round. If you are planning on filling it with fiber fill, I would go ahead and fill it with a fiber fill right now. And then you're gonna work two more rounds of decreased stitches. So you're going to work uh, another round, round 25, with a single crochet, two together, uh, and one in the next stitch. And then uh, a round of single crochets, two together. When you have completed that, you're going to remove your stitch marker and you're going to fasten off. You can just slip stitch into the next stitch in the back loop only, and then fasten, fasten off your work. You're going to leave a little bit of a tail, just like so. If you're working around the bobble, you're going to want to shape it a little bit so that it is more rounded like so. You're then going to take your yarn needle and thread your yarn onto your yarn needle. Then what I did to close the top was I just simply wove in and out all the way around the top of my ornament, creating sort of like a little drawstring. So just weave in and out. When you come back to where you began, you're going to pull it closed. So pull so the top of the ornament is fairly secure. I then just secured it right close to the top with a little bit of a knot. Oops, sorry. And then I wove in my end a little bit. before clipping it off then it, you can attach your hanger just like so and that's all there is to working the diamond Christmas bobble so thank you so much for joining me and once again be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and I look forward to seeing you again soon happy crocheting bye